We're talking today to Larry Stewart of the front men of country. They're going to be in Eau Claire very soon. And me in Eau Claire in two days, actually. Going to be at Pablo Center at the Confluence downtown Eau Claire. 7.30 show. Of course, the uh, front men of country been around for a little bit with, of course, Larry from from uh, the Restless Heart, Bridget McDonald from Lone Star, Tim Rushlow from Little Texas. First question, have you have you been to western Wisconsin, to the Eau Claire area before, to like Country Jam or any uh, other events around here? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Restless Heart's been up there. A few, quite a few times over the last two decades, absolutely. Oh, very good. Yeah, we. I. What's interesting is a lot of your songs crossed over, and as you well know, some of the songs crossed over pop wise. And I grew up listening to pop music around here, so listening to the, to the adult contemporary stations. And I mean, every time I hear "I'll Still Be Loving You" or "When She Cries" or "Tell Me What You Dream," like I mean, I remember hearing those as a kid and as a teenager on the radio here in Eau Claire. Um, there, so there's always been this, I, I guess, this fan base around here. What do you see in your audiences considering what I find fascinating about the frontman of country? It's three singers from primarily country bands that have all had legitimate pop crossover hits. Do you see an, an audience that breaks beyond just country and a wider audience at your shows? Huh. Um, you know, back in the day, there's no doubt about it that we did see that. But really now, you know, even though, you know, we've had those crossover hits here and there, um, we really looked at, you know, lead singers from bands from country music, you know. Um, now maybe some people came over and became country music fans from, you know, from hearing, you know, what does have to be wrong or right or something on an AC channel. But, uh, um, you know, I don't know. It, it's, that's a great question, man. I would, that's, that really is because, um, I've heard a lot of musicians talk about, you know, they heard, Restless Heart, you know, on a crossover station or an AC station or even a pop station, and, and they moved to Nashville. Man, I love hearing those stories, you know, how we influenced some, some great musicians to come, you know, follow that. But uh, as far as today, for me, you know, 30-something years later, I don't know. I really believe that most everybody out there has been country music fans forever. How has the show evolved? How, how has your approach to the show evolved since? And I, and I know you've described before about how you kind of got it going with, I think it was with Richie, and, and you, you had Randy Owen for a little bit, and Tim comes in. And how has this evolved from when you first started to label yourselves the frontman of country to today's show? Well, uh, it's evolved to where it went from a, you know, a, a part-time idea where we went overseas during the off months, January and February, and, and you know, landed on the tr USS Truman, the USS Bush, Afghanistan, Iraq, um, you know, um, parts of the Middle East. I mean, that's what we were doing. We would take the time to go over and, and, and perform for the men and women in uniform. And, um, you know, as we continued to do that on and off over the last, you know, 10 years, really. Um, COVID hit. And, you know, we decided we just, you know, sat around for a year and a half, you know, thinking about life, <laughs> <laughs> where we are, what we're doing. And, and we just got to talking and said, you know, let's take this a, to another level. And, um, and that's kind of what we've done. We decided to do some shows here this year with, with the front man. So um, it's evolved into, um, you know, not just a, a two months out of the year, but you know, kind of doing the tour here in the states. Mm -hmm. How, I, and I've asked this of other artists who have gotten back to touring as the year has gone along. What are you seeing, if anything, in the audience? I guess appreciation of the music in their reaction to being at a concert. Post, I mean, we're not not out of the pandemic, but post the peak of that when there was nothing live happening compared to before all that happening. Have you seen anything different from the audience and how they it, in, experience a concert? Yes. You know, in, in, in many cases, yes. I mean, you know, just really excited to be back, you know, rocking and rolling with, with the music and, and being able to, you know, get in a crowd and, and experience a concert, experience that music that they love. But I tell you what, I think it, 
I, I think it's probably meant more to us. You know, we're you know we talk about we artists talk about you know out there and performing for the fans again. Hey, man, it's for us too. <laughs> man, we need that. We need this, these people. We need a, a crowd, and we need to be able to sing to people again. So. It really has uh, meant a, a lot to us to uh, be able to get back out on the road again. How do you put your? How do you arrange the songs for how you're you're doing? I mean, obviously, knowing that you're going to be singing the song that you songs that you sang and in, in your in the band settings. No, prior to I do all of Lone Star songs, and then Richie does all of Little Texas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just got to it. Whoa! What's this going on here? That would that'd be a hilarious show if that happened. I'd just be like, wait. Wouldn't that be hilarious? That would be would, so funny. I'd love that. But how do you do that? How do you do all the arrangement with like your band members behind you? And do you do you go? Okay, we're in a different setting here. We can do this a little different than we would with our with you know when we did it with a band or if we're doing it with a band still to this day with with the original band. How do you approach that, or do you figure we're going to try to do this as authentic as possible because people know the songs? What's your guys' approach to that? Well, really, the approach and, and what you know we do here is kind of like stories behind the songs, you know, and just kind of talk about where the songs came from or what they meant to us or you know something that cool that that happened, and uh, just more intimate in this setting here uh, that we're going to do in Eau Claire and. Um, it's it's just really cool to I mean to hear you know Richie talk about he was in, you know California and gone for seven weeks when he talked to his little boy he said Daddy when are you coming home you know when he wrote I'm already there and it's, it's just really really you know again just kind of storytelling very laid back and uh, people love this setup you know people say oh my God I can't tell you how many times and I'm just just trying to tell you that. You know, people go, gosh, I think this concert is one of my favorite I've ever seen. It just really meant a lot to, to really see inside the personalities and, and, and get to know everybody and, and, you know, and then to share all those number one songs with people. It, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, like seeing that someone posted in, in response to one of the recent Facebook posts that was like, what was it, a picture of a fan next to a cardboard cutout, I think, of, of one of you or something like that. I'm going, that's a hardcore fan. <laughs> they're going by the cardboard cutouts and they're posting that. That's wow. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's so sad. I I hate that I wasn't around. I don't know what happened. There. <laughs> but there. But that's the thing. They're having great moments. So I'm curious for you, being part of this, what has been your favorite moment in the whole frontman of country tenure, even going back to its nascent days? What what if there was one moment to go? Wow, that happened. What would that be? Really, uh, I, I, I touched on it earlier. Um, being able to go and you know, um, you know, one of those awful little prop planes and flying down the middle of um, the Persian Gulf and landing on you know, the USS Bush or Truman or whichever one, and literally standing in front of three thousand, you know, Marines and uh, men and women. And, and they sang your songs back hmm. and and having Tim or Richie sing a song that really touches people and they sing it back and that I mean grown men, tough marines wiping tears from their eyes. I mean I think I didn't grow up around the military at all. Um and so when I got into the business I had a chance to go do that over in Europe and go to bases and and stuff uh, with Russell's heart. I mean, it introduced me to what it really means, what it really meant for for those people to 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 take on that in their life and sacrifice so much mm-hmm. and make so many friends and stuff. And so, um, still still talk to people all the time uh, across the country that we met, you know, on the other side of the world, and and I just really think that's probably the most powerful. Thing. You know, other than singing I'll Still Be Loving You on the Grammys with Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder and Paul McCartney sitting, sitting 10 feet away from me. <laughs> I mean, other than that, <laughs> you know, that would, that's, I think it's going overseas. Yeah, definitely. I, have you... And I apologize if I'm not knowing this for sure, but have you guys done this as or ever done anything as part of the USO for any, any overseas uh, visits? 
not the USO, but uh, Navy Entertainment and, and some others. I'm trying to think of the letters of those, but we never got to do a USO per se. Mm. But a lot of stuff just like it. It's still that that's that's really good. Um, if yeah. you if you could pick any song, and I'm sure you've been asked this question a bunch of times, but if there's any if there's any song of Tim's or Richie's that you would like to sing that doesn't that doesn't even get performed necessarily. It could be talking like a deep cut or something from another project of theirs. If there is there a song you wish you could sing of theirs that doesn't usually get performed? No, I don't like their songs. No, I just, I just <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't even know where to start with that question. I mean, uh, amazed. Um, I'm already there. Just two of the greatest country ballads, you know, I could ever think of. Um, you know, Tim's got a ton, too. Um, but I don't know if there's just, you, you know, one. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, all of them. Yeah. You, you, you know? Maybe. Really. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, maybe the better question might be what what is it about their singing that really? I mean, you, their personalities. Obviously, you know them. You're friends with them. But what just about their vocal technique? Getting to the basics of being a singer. What about Tim and Richie do you particularly admire? Well, they're they're both singer singers. I mean, they they. And it's really funny you put the three of us together. Our three voices aren't even close to sounding alike. But when we sing together, it's kind of magical. And uh, they really sing great. They sing with conviction. Um, they sing in tune. <laughs> <laughs> they they just know how to sing. And it's really cool to be, you know, on a stage with, you know, I, I, I consider them world-class singers. Um and uh, it's just a lot of fun to, to feel that magic up there. One song after another, after another, after another is a big hit, sung by a great voice. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What would you, or who would you consider to be the better frontmen among current bands, ones that are currently on the on the country charts? Oh, you know, there's not a whole lot of country bands out there anymore. Yeah. Is yeah. A few, but you know, really, I think the greatest the greatest front man of the band was Randy Allen. I mean, he he brought that earthy, rocking kind of in-your-face, entertain the people, put the people in the palm of his hand, uh, you know, kind of broke into the, one of the first acts to ever start doing arenas because we opened for him. I, I, I would stay back. The other guys would go back to the hotel, and I would stay back just to watch Randy Owen own the room. And, I, you know, I, I hadn't been to concerts with that, you know, like bands, you know, through the 70s and 80s. You know, you, you take the Eagles, you know, there's really, you know, there's a bunch of front men in the Eagles, you know, three or four great voices, and they switch up. And, and Randy just, you know, kind of showed me, no Randy Owen, but showed me how to kind of let go and and uh, reach out to the fans, reach out to the audience, and just you know, try to capture them. He always captured them. Yeah, the performances, the like the TV show performances that you can find on YouTube from the early '80s, and see that like the the energy comes through the computer screen. I mean, like wow, I, they, he was jumping all over the place, and this is again in a TV setting on a TV stage back then and like this he, was different he was amazing yeah he really was amazing you know as the front man of the band there were other you know then garth came along he, and he started you know climbing speaker stacks and stuff i mean he kind of <laughs> took it to even another level yeah <laughs> you, know, I mean, that, you were talking about some energy yeah, yeah. But i think randy is really the one who broke the mold for country music and brought that he's an absolute legend uh what are we going to see at the show Friday, besides what you kind of pretty much already laid out, so if someone's listening to this. What what do they ex what should they see at Pablo Center? Well, you know, if you're a fan of '90s country, and you know it's really gotten popular again, um, you know, and, and and bring back memories, bring your girlfriend, your wife, or 
or your husband or boyfriend, whatever. And if you uh, if you love the '90s country, you're going to come there and you know for 90 minutes, two hours, um, bring back memories, and and you'll know you know virtually just about every song that we do. And, uh, and I, I think that's the that's the fun part, you know, because music is powerful. There's nothing more powerful than a, a song that touches somebody's heart. And you know, I, I believe that the three of us, you know, have a few that would really reach out and touch anyone that came. And uh, to think that we could get together and do that, hit the stage, and and sing those songs to be to be something a part of something so powerful as a big hit song that touched people's hearts over the last two or three decades is it's pretty cool what's next for you guys what are you working on be if there is anything besides the touring what what are you guys doing either individually or do you have other plans to do another front of country song what what's coming up next we are discussing that we have recorded one song called if it wasn't for the radio and it's just about how we came to town from our respective small towns in uh, Texas or Oklahoma or, in my case, Kentucky, and, and uh, helped us chase our dream. It's really a cool song, but we are discussing uh, new music, and we have plans to go in and cut a few songs. We don't know if it that looks like just cut singles or cut a full album. We're still trying to figure that out, but we have picked a few songs that we can't wait to record. Well, it should be a great night on Friday night. Pablo Center, it, it is an absolute jewel of a place. Uh, I, I, I happen to sing in a, in a choir here in, in Eau Claire. We were on the stage this past, actually this past Friday, recording a, a virtual concert, and it's, I love being in there every time. The, the place is, they designed it really well. You guys, I'm sure, are going to have a great, great time um, at in, inside the theater coming up on on Friday, it has to be a it has to be a great place because it has a cool name, Pablo Center. It's just a cool name. It is. I like that. Yeah, we yeah, we, yeah here in Eau Claire, we didn't see that coming. We're like, what are they going to name Pablo Center? Well, that's interesting. There's like multiple meanings behind it. So yeah, you're you guys are going to love being in that place. It's right on the confluence of the Eau Claire and Chippewa Rivers, and it's it's gorgeous. So enjoy being here on Friday, and uh, thanks for taking some time to chat with us, Larry Stewart, uh, from, obviously Restless Heart, but the front men of country in Eau Claire, Friday, October 8. All the best. Thanks for doing what you do and doing the songs you've done, and all the best going forward.